In this video, we're going to go through the steps around implementing a model to classify wines. So I'm back in my Jupyter Notebook environment, arguably the best thing and the best friend of a data scientist. I am in chapter five, the IPYNB. And if you scroll to the bottom, there's a section around implementing a model to classify wines. The first thing I do when I try to implement a classifier is to get the data clean and tidy into Python. And in N2, from scikit-learn.datasets, the dataset submodule, I'm importing the load wine function to give me a way to load the wine datasets into Python's memory. So if you're dealing with larger datasets, your load wine or load dataset function may handle things like partitioning and locating the data sets on your disk in your big data store like Redshift or in actual files on your hard disk. You know, it is a good practice to wrap your input output or IO functions into one function so you know how you transform the raw data into data that Python actually sees. I then want to put this data into a particular variable. Here in in3, we're calling the load wine function to load data from the disk. And we're putting this data into a variable called wine data. The next step I want to do is to create a train test split of my data. In in4, I'm importing the convenience function train test split from the scikit-learn module model underscore selection. The next thing to do is to call this train test split function to split our data sets into training and testing sets. In N11, I'm assigning using the tuple shortcut x train, x test, y train, and y test from the outputs of train test split by putting in the data, the target, and specifying that we want the test dataset size to be half of the whole dataset. And to make this train test split reproducible, we are specifying that the random state should be 42. In N12, we are importing NumPy as NP and Pandas as PD as two data science toolkits that we will use to perform this classification analysis. One of the things that we want to make sure we do is to first look at the raw data in a presentable format. To do this, in N13, I'm creating a new pandas data frame with xtrain, which is the training data that we're allowed to see, and assigning a columns in, from winedata.featureNames, which is a feature column names. I'm putting this data frame into a variable called df underscore x underscore train. We then want to look at some summary statistics of the values of the columns that or the features that we have at our disposal. In N14, I'm calling the describe function of the data frame to give me some summary statistics of the columns in my data frame. So here you can see that in out 714, we see on the columns all the features that we have and in the row, some summary statistics, some useful numbers that we can use to gauge what our data looks like. I notice a few things. From the count, I notice that none of the columns are missing any data. From the mean, it tells me that the position of all of these features are distributed in different centers, which may mean that we need to center our data. From the standard deviation, again, we see the spread of the data being of different sizes. So for example, the ash feature has a smaller spread than the malic acid feature. This again translates into the quartile. So the minimum, the 25th quartile, the 50th, the median, the 75th quartile, and the maximum all show that the, the location of the data differs depending on what feature you're looking at. So now I'm armed with some good insights from my summary statistics, and I'm ready to import some functions to try out different models. In N20, because the data is located differently in different features, I'm first importing from the pre-processing module a standard scalar function 
for me to transform the data from the raw data into something that's more standardized. To leverage this with other estimators, I'm importing from scikit-learn.pipeline, make pipeline. From here on, I'm going to import three classes of models that I think are relevant. Number one, we must try some of the linear models. If a linear model works, it's usually the best choice because it's easy for us to debug, understand, and present our results when using linear models. Another popular choice is the support vector machine. Support vector machines are very easy to train, but builds in nonlinearity in a way that's slightly simpler than deep neural networks that are so popular right now. The other thing that used to be very accurate are naive Bayes models. So here we're importing from the naive Bayes module a Gaussian prior naive Bayes model. The last thing we need from scikit-learn is a way to evaluate our results. As such, we're using the confusion matrix from the metrics package to gauge how good our classifier is. Now let's move on to building the first model. In in23, I'm creating a new pipeline using the make pipeline function, feeding in a constructor that contains the Gaussian naive base model. I performed the necessary steps by calling pipe.fit to train on the training data, and I'm scoring both the training data and the testing data of the same model. We can see that the score is 97.7% on the training data, and an even better 98.8% on the testing data. In N25, we can see that the model has successfully classified most of the things correctly on the diagonal, but the first class has one instance of misclassification. Let's turn our attention to support vector classifier. We again make a new pipeline with an SVC, train it, and we notice that the SVC actually doesn't perform as well. Maybe the SVC is too complicated for our use case here, and actually we have some very good predictors in our feature sets. We can see here that while the score is 1, which is very high, 100% accuracy, the score on the test sets is only 40.4%. This shows us that the SVC model has massively overfitted the data and hence is not a very suitable model for us to continue with. If we look at the confusion matrix, we see equally horrendous results. The second class has almost dominated the outputs and while the second class has perfect scores, none of the first and third classes, almost none, all but one of the first and third classes were classified correctly. The last thing we want to try is the logistic regression model, which we went through earlier in the first two videos. Again, I'm creating a new pipeline with the logistic regression model object. Training this shows us some very promising results, 98.8% in training and 95.5% in testing. If we look at the confusion matrix, we can see that this performs slightly less well than Gaussian naive Bayes in this particular wine classification problem. And that's all there is to it. The next section, I'm going to start a new section around start finding groups of similar items. I'll see you guys next time.